Many people dread their commute to work, but Glyn Grayson's is worse than most. After driving 250 miles a day, on top of a demanding job, he has no time for family life. It's time for a big change. He's moving to a new house in the rolling Derbyshire Dales, which his design-loving wife Jan wants to turn into their dream family home. But with Glyn far away at work, Jan is left alone to juggle the pressures of motherhood with managing a huge project. It's a steep, dramatic road to her dream life. I just hope it's all going to be worth it in the long run. <laughs> I've not met anyone as overworked as Glyn Grayson, but he and his wife Jan have had enough of the long hours, the stress and the daily commute of 250 miles. They want a new life in a beautiful new home in an idyllic location that they'll have time to enjoy together with their young daughter. And they're prepared to do anything to get it. As general manager for a multi-million pound car windscreen company in Bedford, Glyn currently drives the 250 mile round trip from his house in Chesterfield every day. And he's been doing it for nearly 10 years. Currently a round trip can be at the absolute best will be three hours. Um, at the worst, seven. For now, Jan has given up running her own promotions business to be a wife and mother. But she feels Glyn's a stranger in his own home. This just sums up our life. He just left me a short message. That's how we communicate, because we haven't got time to actually ring each other during the day. It's just really sad, isn't it? Glyn's so busy, he hardly sees his three-year-old daughter, Lydia. I feel trapped, but the more I look at it and the more I start to clock up how many miles I've done in ten years, I think, I really don't like this anymore. To escape their current life, they have big plans. They're leaving the modern estate in Chesterfield, where they've lived since they married three years ago, to move out to the heart of the Derbyshire countryside and this lovely old farmhouse just outside the village of Snellston. The property is only half an hour away from a new factory Glyn is opening, so the move will end his long commute. Look at this. That's fantastic, isn't it? We think so. When I came round the corner there and saw this little cottage, got and then you, you come into the drive and you've got all of this. Yeah. Brilliant, isn't it? So as you come in the entrance drive, how are you going to change it? We naturally felt that as you came into the driveway that this really was our main entrance. That could, could make a real statement with a big glass atrium and a big double staircase branching left and branching right, right up into what will ultimately be our master bedroom. They've got bucket loads of space, as well as the farmhouse, They've got two cow sheds, a piggery and storehouse, three barns and four outbuildings, plus two fields and an orchard. Glyn and Jan have big plans for this house. From the front, this property appears modest in scale, but when finished, this is going to be one fabulously large country house. The new entrance will be a large glass atrium. The project will bring the barn and the farmhouse together as one big house. On the top floor of the barn will be a huge master bedroom with ensuite bathroom and sauna. Over in the house, four further bedrooms and a bathroom. The ground floor of the house includes a dining room, a large kitchen and a conservatory. The atrium hallway will give access to all areas of the house, but the dual will be a vast 40-foot living room. Jan has a keen eye for design and wants to put her stamp on their new home. Once the house and barn are finished, the plan is to turn the outbuildings into an office for Jan and holiday lets to provide a second income. It's a huge undertaking. So how much did this thing cost you? Uh, two arms and 17 legs. <laughs> <laughs> and in English money, how much is that? <laughs> uh, well in excess of half a million, as is. 
How much is well in excess of? Uh, five grand short of 600. Right. It's 595,000. Five, yeah. yeah. For a wreck. For a wreck uh, with huge potential. It may have huge potential, but at the moment it's completely uninhabitable. It needs new electrics, new plumbing, a new roof. Walls have to be ripped down, knocked through, and rebuilt. The list is endless, and it won't come cheap. Their budget for this project is £250,000. It's now June, and Glyn and Jan are hoping to have their home wind and water tight by Christmas. Wow, look at this. This is going to be your living room? Yes. Living room, plus a bit. Plus uh, a bit, plus yeah. a lot. Plus a lot, yeah. This is brilliant, isn't it? And, uh, and above will be master bedroom. The whole thing is our master bedroom. Wow. It's over 40 foot long, yeah. yes. That yeah. is a huge bedroom upstairs and a huge living room downstairs. Well, we've always aspired to play ping pong across the bed. <laughs> <laughs> you speak for yourself, don't you? <laughs> Glyn and Jan have taken out a massive loan for this project. To add to the pressure, they haven't got planning permission for their design yet. Yeah, I suppose it's an exposed risk we've got. Um, but how would you feel about that? I mean, if that doesn't come through and the planners stop being as difficult as planners can be, the dream's been compromised. We think that's a rubber stamping exercise and from there we expect it to flow straight into the uh, project work. I'm not so sure. And to make things even harder, their big move to the countryside coincides with Glyn tackling a huge project at work, setting up a new factory and getting production up and running at the exact same time as their ambitious building project. Is this the best time for you to be doing all of this? No, it's not. And, and in the best laid plan, we would never, ever move. But you don't get this chance very often. Um, the property's right, the area's right. If we don't do it, you're going to look back on it and say, I wish. And how many people have gone through life saying, I wish I'd done that? So we both agree that if we don't do it now, we probably never will. It was love at first sight when Jan and Glyn Grayson saw this huge rundown farm in the Derbyshire Dales. They've made the brave decision to change their lives by buying it and moving to the country to turn it into their dream home. For Glyn, the move will end the long commute he currently faces day after day from Chesterfield to Bedford. For Jan, it's a chance for her to exercise her passion for design in an area she's fallen in love with like a rubber band effect we kept defaulting back here looking around this area is just totally unique I've always wanted to be part of not Middle England but of the history um, I think this to me represents my ideal Jan's farmhouse is modest in style with small chimneys and plain white windows but inspired by houses in the village she wants to add more ornate features like tall chimneys and decorative woodwork, just like this classic Snellston house. Now this house here seems like a, a, a typical example of that romantic, idyllic, picturesque house in the village. Yeah. What is it you love about it? Well, I love the complication, and I love the Hansel and Gretel feel of it, mm. which is really what I would like Ophiel's farm to have. It's certainly got similar detailing, if you see the finial and, the, again, the decorated barge boards. I love all the wonderful different styles because you've got hints of Tudor, you've got the eclectic variation of Georgian chimneys because they're huge and tall and upright. So your aim is to make this very simple farmhouse into a, quite an ornate traditional Snellston building? Yes, and my God, is it a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Jan is clear about the design she's after, but the planners don't see it as just a rubber stamping exercise. For now, the house just sits there, waiting for a decision. Glyn is busier than ever at work, and his frustration with the planners is growing. The build is not being built. At this point, it's fairly obvious that 
the planners are not playing the game that we want. They're being very official and they're playing it to their timescales. So our anticipation of getting a, a preliminary sort of idea as to whether it would work or not work as a design is now out of the window and we don't really know when we're going to get a decision. It just adds to the frustration of not being able to do anything with a shell that is waiting, crying out for people to work on. So right now we're in limbo land. Even though plan and permission hasn't come through, they sell their house in Chesterfield to relieve some of their debt. Glyn bought this house before he married Jan, so once finished, their new property will be their first proper home together. And Jan is keen to start life afresh. I'm so excited. We're striving for our dream and we're that much closer because we're out of both of our past lives now. And that's fantastic. It's a great feeling. This is the ex-wife's curtains. I'm tempted to put it in the car boot sale, but I think it's best rid, forgotten, start again. The family have moved to a rented home near their farm. It's costing them £1,000 a month in rent. But even after selling Glyn's house, the loan they took out to buy the farm is still a big headache. Because the farm was deemed uninhabitable, they couldn't get a mortgage to buy it. Instead, they had to get a bank loan at a much higher rate of interest. Weekly, it's probably costing us about £700 a week to do nothing and that's on interest and the rent that we're having to spend on this place as well. Um, really, a week's delay is quite significant for us. Right. Jan's nervous about their finances, so she's decided to sell some of her family heirlooms, paintings she's had since she was 16. That was one of my favourite artists. Very nice. Part of the St Ives group. So mm. if, in my own little way, I can generate a few thousand pounds to cover the rent on this place, then that's how I see my job. It's now mid-July, and eight weeks after they put in their application, Glenn and Jan are called to a meeting with the planning department. The planner has a mass of objections to their design. We are very frustrated. Totally, yes. utterly. It is the whole such pace a of things. painful process. It's like walking through treacle. As expected, the main issues revolve around Jan's plans for the exterior of the building. Weeks go by, and with Glyn up to his neck at work and their dream home still on hold, the strain of their current situation is beginning to show. There's no nice conversation. There's no sort of oh, what's on telly tonight, darling? Or just anything even mundane would be better than aggro. And there just seems to be problems. Their biggest problem is their bank loan. It runs out in October, and it won't cover the cost of the bills. Glyn is having to search far and wide for a mortgage company prepared to give them cheaper money and more of it. How are we at speed with the mortgage? We're not. Uh, we're not because the guys are looking around for various options. I started to look at Norwich and Peter and found that the, the website on which you apply was such a monumental task. I was about an hour and a half into it and probably had three hours to go and just aborted it because it was such a lengthy process. Yeah. Because, of course, the clock's ticking and we've got, what, six weeks left before the bridging loan is pulled. I'm not saying that doom and gloom, but we, we, we just must be aware that we have an October deadline that we should keep in the back of our minds. You know as well as I do that if I'd got more time, I'd have resolved it by now. The loan was to buy the property, and it gives them enough money to get the project started, but they'll need a lot more to see it through. If their finances don't get sorted soon, that'll be the end of their dream. I wish Glyn wasn't as busy as he is right now, because if only he could concentrate on <clears throat> what I perceive is really important, like get your backside out there and can we please try and get um, 
quotations in and potential mortgage lenders. But he's so busy. I mean, he works from, well, the day before yesterday, four o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night. I mean, how's a poor guy to do that? In September, after modifying their plans, they hear from the planners. They can't have the tall chimneys, and there are issues with the wooden windows. But the glass atrium has been approved, and so has the timber detailing. John, have the, have the planners allowed you to, to do all the detailing that you wanted in this house? You know, finials and quite ornate barge boards. They can't say anything about the existing finial that, as you can see, is there. It's been and lopped off, hasn't it? Yeah, well, time. actually, it's half on the ground as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and the barge boards as well. Uh, we just basically want to replicate those on the dormer of the windows. OK, so that, that, that timber detailing that are on the barge over the front door, you're yes. going to do exactly the same above on the windows at yes. the top, are you? So do you think that this house, based on the planning you've been given, is going to achieve the village houses, the look of the village houses that you wanted? I'm happy, yes. So finally, the build starts. Glynn has found reliable builders, and work begins with good old-fashioned demolition. First thing to go is the area that will make up their glass atrium entrance hall. To save money, the project management role has fallen to Jan. And with absolutely no experience, she's about to face a huge building project at the same time as looking after her daughter, Lydia. Tempo has changed. It was kind of like a very slow, meandering waltz, and now it's suddenly gone into manic punk rock. It's, it's like pogo sticking everywhere. I just love it. I just keep beaming like a Cheshire cat because it's just finally started. To add to the challenge, Glyn and Jan are hoping to get the house wind and watertight by Christmas. From day one, Jan feels the pressure. Right now, I'm still rather daunted about the amount of work that's, that's needed. I sort of look at that doorway and I think, really, I should be thinking what kind of lintel I want on top of that doorway. Oh, my God, I've got to go to here and I've got to do this. And So everything that you look at, you think, I've, I've got to do part of it. And it's, it's just multiplying up all the work that you've actually got to do. Jan is going to struggle to cope with a project of this size. Project management is not as easy as you might think. But the work carries on at a pace, and in under a week, the entire roof of the farmhouse is removed. Replacing the roof is their next priority. Then there's a long list of jobs that need doing just to get the farm watertight. One of Jan's main jobs is sourcing materials, and she's been out buying. And on one of their precious Saturdays together, Jan and Glenn are taking delivery of 4,000 reclaimed bricks. So, brick delivery. We've been advised, if you pardon the French, that we have bastard-sized bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Which... Have really, you got the old, really you've got the traditional, what, two, two, and three three, two and three quarter inch bricks? Two and three quarter as opposed to three inch. So on that basis, they're like rocking horse droppings, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Reed, they are expensive. <laughs> Do you know where they've come from? Yes, Ilkeston. Um, yeah, there were, you see, we only really had, after spending quite a number of hours walking around the yard, um, measuring every single brick, believe me, because there's also variations within the bricks in depths. Um, you sound like a bit of an obsessive. Oh, I'm going round, measuring every single yeah, I, brick. I, I, was, I was. I mean, you are now talking to the queen of valley tiles and ridge tiles. Jan seems very laid back, but the pressures are beginning to mount. It is a stressful thing to do, isn't it? I mean, any building project is, but when you're taking on project management yourself, it just compounds that, that stress. I won't deny that I've been tearful. Um, I've been in quite a few floods of tears just by the sheer pressure and the frustration of people not getting back to you. And, you know, you've got sort of builders sort of on site saying, well, what are we going to do? You know, and, I, and I'm sort of like trying to spin all these plates. I mean, this is an incredibly steep learning curve for 
Me, certainly. Over the next few weeks, Jan gets her teeth into running the build. And can I have a kilo of the 75 mil galvanised clamps yeah, with the big no heads? You know all sizes? Have you got them all? Uh, no, it's up to John to do me a window schedule. When do you need the wood for the purling? As soon as possible. Right. OK. Definitely. And we want a 12, two 12 foot, two 13 foot and two 19 foot. And they can be any size between 9 by 6 or 8 by 8. Is that right? Yeah. Finding authentic period features for Jan's design is not easy. About there. And the builders are waiting. It's fun, this, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, this is... 18 foot. You know, you can't lay them in as they were. You've got to lay them in at the socket so you get the deflection going down your roof like that. Hello, John Duffy Grayson. Shall I say six and a quarter? Six and a quarter. You do feel a bit stupid, a woman in a man's world, because the, the building trade, the reclamation trade, it's all a man's world. If I get called me duck one more time, or love, or babe, I'll spit. So did you, did you manage to get the, any more of the bricks? I feel like I'm firefighting when actually I should be planning when the next fire is going to be lit. It's, hard, Robbie. it's four weeks into the build, and Jan and Glynn are working hard to keep the dream on track. And on top of the demands of running a project on this scale, Can you stay here with me? Jan has the wrench of taking Lydia to nursery. Right. Come on, sausage. Can you stay here? Well, well let's see how it goes, shall we? No. Come on, sausage. Come on. Shall we go and find your friend? No. Now I've got to snap from mummy mode when I could really just burst out crying because I, I, would, I would hate anything to happen to Lydia and, and I would move mountains for her. And now I've got to get on with all the rest of the SH1T that's going down right now. So I've just got to brush myself off, start again, shake myself down. The next problem. Life for the Graysons is not easy. And to make matters even worse, the money is still not sorted um, out. Have you got all the finances in place now? No, just about. Uh, still a huge slice on bridge, um, which is painful. And so have you actually been digging into your savings to pay for the builder so far? Uh, dug into and expended totally. Really? Yeah. So you've run out of cash? Yeah, just about. So you need to get that mortgage in place? Yeah. So how are you going to pay the builders next week? Well, we're not paying the builders next week, but by the end of next month, it'll get difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a, what, a month's deadline, really? I've got, to get some I've got four in. weeks, yeah. Four weeks. End of October. So uh, that will get difficult by then. Glyn might be putting a brave face on it, but he needs £250,000 to complete this job. Otherwise, the project's over. Jan and Glynn are up to their necks in this build and at work. They've got a mountain to climb and they still don't have the money in place. It's a massive challenge and I really hope they can get through it. Jan and Glyn Grayson fell in love with the rundown farm in the heart of the Derbyshire Dales. They're proud owners of 12 acres, seven outbuildings, and a huge wrecked farmhouse, which they're renovating at the same time as Glyn has a big project at work, getting a multi-million pound factory up and running. I've done this, this work slog now for eight years, and it's probably so difficult now to remember what life was like before I was doing it. It's great, isn't it? Great news. Jan is struggling to manage this beast of a building project. We really didn't need that to happen. It's the end of October, and work is forging ahead on the build. They stripped the roof off the large barn, and now have to rebuild some of the exterior walls before they fix a new roof on. Really? Shoot. So, so... Your best price was 17. I, I haven't got anywhere to write it down. Just bear with me a sec. It's an enormous job. And if that's not enough, they're running out of money fast. Delays getting planning permission has meant that they don't have a mortgage. And Glynn's trying desperately to negotiate a deal 
before his savings run out at the end of the month. Whilst Jan is juggling project management and motherhood. Where are we off to now, Lydia? Are we off to school? Are you looking forward to it? No. No? Why, darling? Concerned about their finances, Jan has decided to put herself under even more pressure by reviving her old business, producing corporate gifts to bring in some much needed cash. Hi, Jan. Hi, Jed. How are you doing? I've been chasing up the advent calendars and the desktop calendars, and yeah. uh, apparently the wire rope binder has broken down again and as of yet I still don't have a production time dispatch finish. I've received your email this morning and is there is there any way you can be a bit more specific as, as to the time because obviously I've got a 225 mile round trip if I have to do it myself. So it can't be tomorrow. All I need right now. Jan should be signing off on the window design and project managing the large workforce on site. So they're not actually back from the finishes yet, and then you've got to put the chocolates in. This is not the most ideal place to conduct business, but I just have to do it. Without earning money, this can't happen, and it's just. Sometimes I wonder whether we've bitten off more than we can chew financially because it is hard. I make no illusions as to how expensive it is. But I, I just hope it's all going to be worth it in the long run. <laughs> just keep laughing, Jan, keep laughing. Glenn and Jan are spending very little time together. But when they are together, things are not running smoothly. This is really quite different because it, it's just how they constructed it. We can actually keep that as a, a feature if we wanted to. You're not listening, are you? No, I'm right. Got the two things at once. Oh, sorry, I forgot you were around. Oh, damn, I forgot. I'm worried about what Jan has taken on and whether all this stress is worth it. Can you still see the? the dream of what this place is going to be like, even when all the stress and chaos is happening. In spite and despite everything that's going on, the one thing that's holding us together and holding the marriage together as well, because it, it is testing, you know, be under no illusion, this is really hard work. I think the dream hasn't faded, it hasn't died, and it's the one thing that's keeping everything together, because you just come up here, when things get too much, I do actually come up here and look back, look at the dream and think, it's fantastic. It is worth it. All my emotions, everything, everything is into this build. Um, it's my aspirations, my, my dreams, my future and my past. It's all one. It really isn't just bricks and mortar. It's everything. By the beginning of November, the builders have demolished the front bay of the house, which they'll rebuild. And they've started on the extension at the side, to create a conservatory and games room. With all this work going on, I'm keen to know what's happening with the finances. So I catch up with Glenn at his new factory. My biggest worry was money, because <laughs> you didn't have any. You nearly ran out, hadn't you? Well, it did get quite hairy, because um, we said that it was going to be uh, touch and go as to whether the bank came up with a mortgage or Halifax. The bank didn't, and neither did Halifax, and we actually got to about three days away from paying the lads. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, that we were, we were so tight on paying the lads. I don't think they realised how close they actually came to not getting paid. So did you have any other option at that point? Apart from putting a 12-bore shotgun to my head and pulling the triggers, no. Um, we were really up against it time-wise. We were totally and utterly screwed. And I said when we started this, this could be financial suicide, and it almost was. Glenn has not managed to convert his bank loan into a mortgage, 
he has negotiated another loan which will allow him to continue the build, but he's still paying a lot in interest. Back on site, the builders have moved inside the barn. Now they've got to concrete all the floors. This enormous space will become a 40-foot living room. Outside, the games room and conservatory are going up, and the entire building is being repointed. As busy as Jan is, she's still got her eye on the detail. I'm being fussy now. You know, the third, fourth brick down, does that not look a bit ropey? Yeah, the one that's inset. What you want to chuck out? Yeah. I'm sorry for being a pain, but it looks quite ropey. And that one that's at your head level, that's got a big chunk out of it, that one. Do you want that out? Do you mind? Your old bricks. Please. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously, you know, just mentioned it. The mortar was really quite significant for me because, again, I wanted everything to be true to how it should have been. And looking at that now, doesn't that look absolutely stunning? There is, there is no variation in colour, and that is exactly how the house would have looked when it was first built. So I'm absolutely delighted. But despite all the progress, Glenn and Jan have a very tight deadline to meet on this build because a holiday booked and paid for over a year ago is approaching fast. And they want to be wind and water tight before going away in just over a month. But there's still a gaping hole where the glass atrium, bridging the barn and farm, is supposed to be. It's proven to be a major headache. Glyn makes a rare visit to site to fill me in. This is going to be really the, the best part of the building for you, isn't it? This glass atrium has been an absolute bane of my life, hopefully. It's going to be a stunning new entrance to the property. Um, it's where a bit of the old meets something very new, and it's our attempt to try and get some real light into the place because it's quite dark and dingy. Due to the amount of glass in this showpiece atrium, Glyn and Jan are having problems getting the finalised design approved by building regulations. Until then, the cost is unknown. Because the design are very minimal, triple glazed glass link like this, mm. to comply with the new regulations, and that's the big problem. The new regulations are so tight about heat gain and heat loss. To do an argon-filled glass unit, which is all so very technical, but is very expensive, mm. it will cost you a small king's ransom. Is that five king's ransoms or about... 30 King's Ransom. It's getting more towards 30 King's Ransom. Oh. Then that's about 40% more than we anticipated. But it's quite phenomenal how much you guys have taken on. You're one of the busiest men I've ever met. I mean, setting up a brand new factory and getting it up to the production levels that you needed to. Um, you've moved house, you've taken on a building site, and you've got everything going on. It's incredible. But it's not wise. <laughs> <laughs> Wise and grace and do not go together in the same sentence. It is not something you should take on board. This was stupidity, but it was a chance in a lifetime to do it once. At the end of November, the build starts to hit problems. The roofing is just about finished, but the final design on the 34 new windows has yet to be signed off, and the cold weather slows building work. Jan is desperately trying to keep the momentum going, but there's an immense amount of work to do, and by the beginning of December, all hopes of getting the building watertight are over. Glyn and Jan's critical deadline was to have all of this building wind and watertight by Christmas. Well, the roof's not finished, the windows aren't in, the bad weather started to kick in, and the builders aren't even on site. Is the build starting to wear you down a bit, do you think? You could say that, yeah. Yes, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's probably a low point right now. I just think it's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> and I think all, all our contingencies are ganging up on us all at once. My, my greatest fear now is that I'm not going to be around. In a week from now, there's Christmas, and then after Christmas, we're going to be going on holiday. Is that wise? 
Well, unfortunately, yet again, it was bought and paid for um, as we'd just seen this place. And we never thought for a second we'd actually buy this place. And I think sometimes you've just got to go. And I think part of me thinks, I need a break. My health's not brilliant. I could really do with a change of climate. But then I think, one, we can't afford it. Two, I certainly can't afford the time. And three, who's going to be around here to pick out the important bits and to do the finishing touches? With no plumbing, no electrics, no windows, and still no sign of an atrium, Glyn and Jan make the tough decision to close down the site whilst they're away. When they return in February, there's bad news about the glass atrium. Our biggest problem has been around getting the design of the atrium, and it's just not worked. Um, which just not worked, and we, at the end of the day, we said we're not prepared to spend the amount of money that the guys are coming up with. Um, it was tens of thousands. It was well, it was <laughs> just it way was out of forty thousand pounds, um, and we're just not prepared to spend forty thousand putting a roof over a set of stairs. It's just not worth it. So, how much have you saved by not doing the glass atrium now? Um, on our original estimation, uh, seventeen thousand. That's a big mm. saving. Huge yeah. saving. Yeah. But it is a compromise in the design, isn't it? It is. Um, yes, because I was quite excited about it at first. You're you very know, excited you, about you know, it. With the fantastic light and um, action and all that kind of thing. But now, the more I think about it, we're actually being a little bit truer to the farm itself by going back to the original openings from the piggery. Work starts again with Carpenter's first fix in the inside of the old farmhouse. And by mid-March, the new atrium design is well underway. And the 34 handmade oak windows start going in. And they're plasterboarding the 40-foot master bedroom. And Jan seems to be in full control of the process. Do you think you're, hopefully for the first time, really starting to enjoy the build? Because if you can see... <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> You've got to be joking. I can honestly say... You could offer me any job on this universe, the one I would turn down instantly, and I'd have a go at most things, is project management. I would never do that again. <laughs> Hats off to them. They're brilliant. I couldn't do it for a living. Glyn may have cut down his daily commute, but he's got less free time than ever. He's now starting to have big thoughts about his future. We've hardly spent any time together whatsoever. It's been a nightmare, but there's a reason for it. And when you know there's a reason for it, you put up with it. It's been shit. It's been awful. Um, and I wouldn't recommend it. From my point of view, I've never, ever got the work-life balance right. We've got to change it. I've got to get my act together. So uh, I'm going to have to do something about that. Really? Yep. That's quite a big statement for you to make, isn't it? Yeah, how I do it is a different thing. But, yeah, I'll make the change. Uh, and the officers there quite appeal to me. Um, so I certainly feel that I've got to be master of my own destiny in the future. Things are really shaping up for Glyn and Jan in Derbyshire. What remains to be seen is exactly how their new house and life will turn out. Jan and Glyn Grayson want a better quality of life with their daughter Lydia. They've moved to the heart of the Derbyshire Dales and have been struggling to turn a derelict farm and barn into a family home. While Jan's been on site, Glyn's been stuck at work. 
For the last 10 months, Glyn and Jan have been swamped by this huge project, but they've dug deep and kept going, and I'm looking forward to seeing if they've got the house they've always wanted. The exterior of the building has gone through a major facelift. What was once a ramshackle barn and farmhouse has been brought together as one lovely house, which now boasts a welcoming courtyard and a brand new main entrance. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. You're well? I'm fine, yes, thank you. How is it? Well, what do you think? It's good, isn't it? Changed a bit. It's changed more than a bit. So have you moved in? <laughs> Come and have a look. Who? Kitchen. Go for it. What do you think? This is lovely, isn't it? This is great. What a stunning kitchen. Oh, look, 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 look. Sexy big freezer. I've never had a big freezer before. This is huge. I know. This is my favourite view of the whole house. This detailing with that, that and that. It's absolutely perfect. I love it as you walk So the way that the old cupboards are all curved and then that one's yes, curved and that one's yeah. curved and that one's curved. You're, you're an obsessive, aren't you? I am. I mean, you talk about the best view in the house and you're showing the kitchen units. How sad am I? Yeah. <laughs> After all the stress and all the worry that you've been through, look at you. You're glowing, aren't you? Just so much happier. There's a big smile on your face. You are. You're glowing. Yeah. Jan's hard work is clear. The old rundown rooms on the ground floor of the farmhouse have been magically transformed. The old reception room is now a study for Glyn, with an impressive adjoining wine cellar. There's a dining room where Jan's passion for antiques and eye for detail are fully on display. Upstairs in the farmhouse, the bedrooms have been given the same attention. Four beautifully finished spaces and a lavish family bathroom. The atrium that links the old farmhouse and the barn is not the modern glass structure they'd hoped for, but they're happy. It just works. Yeah. Um, and if I'm really honest, I think it works better now than it would have done before. Yeah. I do. Into the barn, the 40-foot space on the ground floor has been converted into a massive this living room. This is something special, isn't it? This is huge. Huge. Ballroom, isn't it? This is ballroom. It's like a banqueting hall. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just. I think to, to change this building in the way that you have is, is quite amazing, really. Above the living room in the barn is Glenn and Jan's luxurious retreat. Look at the size of this bedroom. What's beautiful about this room is that you've really kept all of the old materials absolutely perfect. You must be thrilled. We are. This is our dream. This is it. This is what it's all been about. This is surrounded by the countryside. And this is building our future. The once derelict farm now has a family-friendly feel. But will Glynn have the time to enjoy it? Hey. Brilliant. So, the future. Tell yes. me what the future holds for you. New, uh, new way of earning a living, that's for sure. For me, anyway. But what do you mean by that? That's You're working miles away from here still. Um, Correction, was. Um, that's all changed because uh, in the future I'll uh, probably be self employed. Hang on, uh, you've left work. Are you trying to tell me that you're packing in work? Um, well, we call time on a 10 year arrangement and it's time to change life. This is a massive change. Yeah, well, it's 10 ch years. It's a change. That's what I'm going to do. And it's now you've just packed in work. That's it. Oh, it's for us now, you know, and I've got to change that. It's got to be a different emphasis. Um, the office block across there is probably where I'll be based from. Man, I'm shocked. I think it's fantastic. I think Pack it's in a highly stressful job. <laughs> Glyn and Jan have been under immense financial pressure, but they do now have a traditional mortgage. And as well as working from home, they have plans to turn another one of their barns into holiday lets, which will give them more income. For the family, the farm is more than just their perfect home. It's the key to their future together. I think we've come full circle. I think we've realised a dream. It means about 60 steps up the quality of life ladder. 
Taking the decision to make a life-changing move can be daunting, but Glyn and Jan have shown that with passion, belief and hard work, anything is possible. Just look at what they've achieved. This building and their lives have been completely transformed. This really is the stuff of dreams.